All right, you now know everything about base parameters and inheritance, so let's get back to our trim. And let me just reassure you, most of the times you won't have to touch the base parameters or think about inheritance at all. But in some cases, you need to understand at least the basics. And the use case at hand here was to fix our tiling problem. And tiling is a base parameter, so we had to go through this. Right now, it's grayed out because it's set to relative to input. So let's switch that to absolute. And now we can choose what type of tiling we want. We can disable the repetition completely or just on one axis. So let's go for vertical tiling. And there we go. We have a nice single row of threads. All we have to do now is to place it where we want. Here, I'm just using the offset slider because it's more convenient. All right. Somewhere around the edge here. Okay. We can now blend this with our base. Let's go for max mode. Okay, let's maybe scale down the threads one more time. Put them back into place. You see that here I'm struggling to reroute the connection after the height blend. That's actually because of the connection mode I'm in. When you're in material mode, it can sometimes prevent some outputs to be properly rerouted. Um, I could switch to standard mode to fix this, but I'm just going to do it manually this time. Okay, I think it stands out a bit too much, like the profile is too rounded. So I'm just going to fix this quickly with the levels. Shifting the gamma. Perfect, we added the first row of our trim. Now we just have to repeat these steps for the next rows and that shouldn't be too hard. For the sequence, we can use the exact same technique. So offset, duplicate, recenter, blend, then adjust the size so that they overlap nicely. Then we take another transform to tile them in a row switching the tiling to absolute, then to vertical only, and dividing. All right, you see with practice, you get pretty fast at it. Now let's blend this with our base, then place it next to the threads. Now it's a bit hard to see because it sits on the very edge of the tile, but we can fix this in the material property of the 3D view. Simply shift the UVs a little with this tiling slider. Don't worry, it's not going to change the actual tiling of the material, it's just about the preview. Alright, it's already looking pretty good if you ask me. Of course, if we look at it up close, well, we see some artifacts due to the resolution. But if we switch to 4K, you see that the result is very decent. So we can go back to our 2K resolution without worrying too much about it. We have one last row to add, and you know the drill by now, so why don't you pause the video and try it? I'm just going to do it quickly on my side. Maybe rescaling a little. This time we don't need to do all that duplicating and blending, we can just tile it directly. Removing the horizontal tiling. And then adding it to the main connection. Okay. And here again, I think I'm going to adjust the levels a little, like so. And when I look at it, I still feel like we're losing too much details, even in 2K. I'd like it to be more crisp, so I'm just going to add a sharpen here. All right, see the difference it makes if I mute the node with Shift D? It really helps. All right, so we made good progress on our trim in this video. We learned how to use the dot node to organize our connections. We practiced a little our shape creation skills. In the next video, we will add the gemstones to wrap up the trim.